In this video, we're going to explore the idea of statistically adjusting for a confounder. We've already discussed the concept of confounding, and we've also already explored the idea of confounding in this data set a little bit, but now we're going to look at it numerically and a little bit more than we did previously. We've been working with the FEV data set, and I've already imported the data and attached it. So first, let's go ahead and fit an unadjusted model. Here, we're going to try and estimate the effect that smoking has on FEV or lung capacity, and I'm going to save that in an object called unadjusted model. So let's fit that model. We can look at a summary of the model. So this smoking coefficient here of 0.71, we said that the interpretation of that would be that for a smoker, we'd expect the mean lung capacity to be 0.71 liters larger than a non-smoker. Now that's clearly a very biased estimate, and we explored conceptually why that might be happening. So we're going to look at adjusting for age as a potential confounder. So we're going to look at age as a potential confounder. We already said that conceptually, age makes sense as being a confounder. In the previous video, we looked at the diagram for the association between age, smoking, and FEV, and it made sense. So now let's check numerically if age seems to be behaving like a confounder. The first thing we can do is check if X2 is related to Y, or in this case, if age is related to the outcome of FEV. If we look at a plot, we can see there's a pretty strong association there as age increases, lung capacity increases, as we'd expect. And we can calculate the correlation as well if we want to quantify the strength of that association. And we can see the correlation is 0.756. So they are associated numerically. It makes sense conceptually that they'd be associated. And if we think of the direction of the association, it would be age having an impact on lung capacity and not the other way. Your lung capacity can't have a direct effect on your age. Now we can check if X2 and X1 are related. In this case, is our age and smoking related. Visually to do so, we can look at a box plot. So here I'm going to look at a box plot of age for smokers and non-smokers. And we can see there the smokers are much older on average than the non-smokers. We can also have R calculate the mean age for the non-smokers and the mean age for the smokers. Right? We can see the smokers on average are about four years older. So numerically, they are associated. Conceptually, it makes sense that they'd be associated. Right? As the kid is older, they're more likely to smoke than when they're younger. Doesn't mean they're going to, but as age increases, the likelihood of smoking increases. And if we think of the direction of association, it's going to be age having an influence over smoking. Right? Smoking cannot influence your age. We've already fit the unadjusted model. Right? So let's try fitting a model that statistically adjusts for age. Here, I'm going to fit a model that uses both age and smoking to estimate FEV. So here we're going to get the effect of smoking on FEV adjusted for age. So I'm going to save this in something called the age adjusted model. So here, let's fit that model. We can ask for a summary of the model. And here we can see the smoking coefficient is now negative 0.208. So the interpretation of this is when we adjust for age, or if we take a smoker and a non-smoker who are the same age, we'd expect the smoker's lung capacity to be about 0.21 liters lower on average than the non-smoker. And we also said sometimes we want to look at the standard error. We can see the standard error of the coefficient is 0.08. So just remember those two values, the smoking coefficient of negative 0.21, standard error of 0.08. And comparing those to the unadjusted model, we can see the coefficient was 0.71. So quite a large change, which we'd expect to see for a confounder. And we can see the standard error when we adjust for age, went from 0.11 down to 0.08. Again, what we'd expect to see for a confounder. Not much change in the standard error or maybe a little bit of a decrease. So numerically, age seems to be behaving like a confounder, and conceptually, it makes sense as a confounder.